I bet if I asked you to list all of the cool cars you could think of from the 1980s, a 1986 Toyota Corolla wouldn't be on your list. It doesn't talk, it hasn't got guns or a time machine, and it wasn't made famous by an inquisitive bloke with a big moustache and tight tennis shorts. Yet somehow this seemingly run-of-the-mill coupe with its typically uninspiring Japanese 80s styling has become one of the most sought-after performance cars to come out of Japan like ever. This car almost single-handedly invented a whole new motorsport genre and it became the star of a cult TV and film series. So what, you might ask, is this car's secret weapon? What is so special about the AE86 Toyota Corolla GT Coupe? I have to admit, if you're not into cars like me, it's a little bit boring and nerdy, but it's the engine. And this is the engine, obviously. It's a 1.6 litre 16 valve twin cam. It's good for 124 brake horsepower. And there was a poster campaign by Toyota at the time that read, fact, the most advanced 16 valve four cylinder production engine in the world. The problem with that claim is that it came 20 years or so too late. You see the four AGE engine in the AE86 Corolla is to all intents and purposes a production version of the Cosworth BDA that was built for the Works Rally Ford Escorts in the mid 60s. It's got the same bore and stroke, the same valve and port sizes, and the internals look remarkably similar. As far as the Escort is concerned, the BDA transformed a humble family saloon car into one of the most formidable and popular competition cars on the planet. And Toyota was hoping that this 4AGE engine could do the same for its Corolla. In other words, none of this was by accident. The marketing claims about the engine in this Corolla AE86 weren't actually wrong. This was the most advanced production engine of its type at the time, even if Ford had given Toyota the original idea 20 years earlier. At a time when a switch to front wheel drive and a growing motoring social responsibility was seeing a definite toning down of most manufacturers' marketing, Toyota unapologetically focused on performance for the AE86, with horses coming out of bonnets and endless references to this rather curious engine spec. It's not just the engine that jumps off the page at you when you're reading up on the AE86 spec. Front McPherson struts and a four-linked live rear axle provide further curious links to the sporting escort. And coupled with a limited slip differential, which was standard equipment on many of the models, it was clear that the Corolla AE86 was destined for fame and glory on, say, the mountain roads of Japan. And that's exactly where this car did find fame. At the hands of legendary Japanese Tuga race driver Kaichi Tsuchiya. Conscious that his ability to fire the venerable AE86 Corolla up a mountain road faster than just about anybody else and in any other car was a bit boring for spectators, Tsuchiya began to use the rear wheel drive and limited slip diff to full effect, throwing the car in sideways at every opportunity. Drifting as a motorsport discipline had arrived and Tsuchiya would become known as the Drift King. Remember the disapproving fisherman who watches Sean practicing his drift skills on the dock in Tokyo Drift? Yes, you guessed it, a cameo appearance by the real life Drift King. Tsuchiya's success inspired a manga cartoon series called Initial D with character Takumi Fujiwara, a tofu delivery driver by day and a mountain drift racer by night. It inspired a TV and film series which was subtitled all over the world as the Japanese street racing culture became ever more popular during the 90s. The undisputed star of the film series though was Fujiwara's black and white Corolla AE86 which he used to good effect as you might expect against much more 
because there's a place in the world where the GT Coupe AE86 Corollas are even more of a cult hero than in their native Japan. Ireland. Perhaps we can trace this phenomenon back to 1985 when Per Eklund took a Corolla to the British Open Rally Championship title. Whenever or however it began, one thing is for certain. A big part of the reason you'll struggle to find an original, unmodified AE86 for sale anywhere in the world is the car's popularity in Ireland as a rally car. You'd struggle to find an issue of motoring news in the 90s or early 2000s without a photo of that boxy front grille exploding out of a water splash on a night road rally or that four-linked rear end smoking its tyres on an Irish lane in front of a rapturous crowd. Ireland has become something of an AE86 hoover. The slightest whiff of one for sale and the ferry's booked and it's pushing the prices up. £5,000 will get you a very rough example. You're talking 15 grand and above if you want something half decent and original. And it's not because they've all been turned into rally cars and crashed. In fact, there's a big event every year at Mondello Park called 86 Fest at an original. And it's the biggest gathering of AE86 Corollas in the world. Funnily enough, the other car that's heralded in Ireland as being the epitome of the rally car Corolla AE86 has been described as Toyota's evolution of the Escort RS 1600, which in isolation is a bizarre notion. Are you telling me that the bloke in charge of the design department at Toyota in the mid 80s was so misty eyed about the success of the rally escorts that he managed to persuade the suits at Japan's biggest car manufacturer to produce a tribute act? No, the similarities between the sporting escort and this AE86 Corolla can more easily be described with a bit of Japanese pragmatism. You see, the humble escort became so popular and so successful because it was simple. Perhaps Toyota realized that as cars were becoming more sophisticated and more focused on luxury and comfort and economy, a lightweight, practical performance car that handled well, had a fair amount of power and borrowed a few well-proven fundamental mechanical principles would be good for business. Fast forward to 2022 and just imagine if amidst the sea of EVs and overly sophisticated and frankly unnecessary SUVs there was a performance car still living by those principles taking the performance car market by storm without reinventing it. 
There is one, you know, and it's a Toyota. That's legacy, that is. <laughs>